today's show, Tesla officially begins Tesla Model 3 dual motor production at a brand new production line inside a temporary tent-like structure beside its Fremont facility. Porsche buys a 10% stake in hypercar manufacturer Rimac and EV City opens up in Christchurch, becoming the place to go if you want to find more about owning and buying an EV. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and we've got everything from race cars to electric planes and even transforming coal-powered power stations in today's show. So let's get on with it. We start today with Audi, which has announced a new partnership with SMA Solar Technology and the Hager Group to bring cost-optimized charging to its soon-to-launch Audi e-tron. With an 11 kilowatt charger as standard and an optional second charging unit to enable 22 kilowatt charging at home, the Audi e-tron, thanks to the new partnership, will be able to charge when energy is not only at its cheapest, but also at its greenest, even throttling power to ensure the house's electricity system isn't overloaded or to ensure it's charged only using renewable power generated by solar panels on the roof of the owner's home. In other words, it's a responsive charging system that Audi says will seamlessly connect to the owner's home and to the local grid to ensure optimum energy management for everyone. Some 11 months after the first production Model 3 electric cars rolled off Tesla's Fremont production line, Tesla has now officially begun producing the all-wheel drive, or dual motor, variant of its mid-sized electric sedan. Given Tesla is already balls to the wall inside its Fremont production facility, dual motor Model 3 production is taking place inside a massive aluminium framed temporary structure located alongside the Fremont production line. Some people are calling it a tent, but to be honest, it's closer to a temporary warehouse, agricultural building or aircraft hangar than anything else. The erection of the building happened in super quick time, and of course, that's something that made Tesla CEO Elon Musk very happy indeed, as Tesla is rushing to get as many cars out of the door as possible. Audi and Hyundai may be working hard to bring their own long-range electric cars to market, but the two automakers have announced a new partnership on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. The partnership would see them cross-license hydrogen fuel cell patents from each other, as well as share non-competitive components between the two companies. Although Audi is part of its Volkswagen group, it is Audi which has been tasked with developing fuel cell technology which if successful, will be shared across the whole Volkswagen group. Audi has been working on hydrogen fuel cell technology for more than 20 years, but like Hyundai, has yet to produce a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle that can beat electric cars in terms of total build cost and sticker price. While Audi is busy with fuel cells, the Volkswagen Group's research division has announced a $100 million investment in QuantumScape, a solid-state battery startup spun out of Stanford University, which has been collaborating with the company for the past few years. The investment seems to suggest the Volkswagen sees commercial potential in QuantumScape's products, and the two companies are now talking about a long-term target of building a production line for solid-state batteries by 2025. Of course, other automakers are working on solid-state tech too, but Volkswagen says the QuantumScape technology could more than double the range of today's electric vehicles and give them faster charger times and longer battery lives too. Air travel is still one of the most polluting forms of transportation today, but this week, solar panel company Sun Power announced a new partnership with the Mission Solar Stratus Expedition. What's that, I hear you ask? It's a mission to fly a solar powered, super lightweight airplane at 75,000 feet, complete with pilot. The mission itself has been in the planning stage now for about two years, and the flight will last about five hours. Two hours ascending, 15 minutes at high altitude, and then three hours to descend, and is meant to showcase both renewable energy and zero emission flight. It won't be the highest ever electric plane because NASA managed that with its Helios vehicle, but if all succeeds, it will be the record for the highest ever manned flight of an electric vehicle. Here's to the team and an amazing adventure which lies ahead.
Porsche might be full steam ahead with the production plans for its first electric car, the Porsche Taycan, but it's also been busy making strategic business investments. This week, it acquired a 10% stake in Croatian electric hypercar manufacturer Rimac. With Rimac going from zero to hero in just 10 years, producing one of the world's most sought-after hypercars, it's clear Porsche wants to leverage some of Rimac's expertise in battery and drivetrain technology. And Rimac is looking at the stakeholding as a way of helping it become an electric car component and system supplier of choice for the automotive industry. What's Elon Musk's exit strategy? It's a question lots of people have asked over the years, and with Elon Musk recently buying more Tesla stock, it's clear that he's intending to stay at Tesla for the long term. Unlike many CEOs, Musk's salary is basically nothing but stocks, meaning he does have to stick around for the long term to reap any financial reward from the company. But this week, we learned that while he currently has no intentions of going nowhere and has said multiple times in the past that he'll be the last one to sell his Tesla stock, he does intend to sell a major stake in Tesla in about 20 years to help finance one of his other life goals, helping SpaceX colonize Mars. In the meantime, he's intending to continue to sell off a couple hundred million dollars of Tesla stock every few years for charity, something he's already done multiple times. It's that time of year again. This coming weekend, thousands of people will flock to Pikes Peak in Colorado for the annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. And alongside the various loud, roaring vehicles taking place, an ever-increasingly large number of electric vehicles will be zipping up the mountain. And this year, there's serious upset on the mountain thanks to the Volkswagen ID.R Pikes Peak, which has consistently set fastest times on the course, finishing the shortened qualifying section of the hill climb more quickly than anything else, 11 seconds more quickly. With 680 horsepower, Romain Dumas on the IDR Pikes Peak could set a new record this weekend. So here's good luck to him and everyone else who's competing. If you want to buy a new or used electric car in New Zealand, our own buyer's guide is always a great place to go. But did you know there's now a specialist used car showroom in Christchurch specifically focused on helping you dump the pump? Enter EV City, a bespoke showroom selling just electric, plug-in hybrid and hybrid cars. Now officially open, the party was earlier this month, although they've been in operation a while, they've got a great selection of vehicles and can even help you sort out financing and insurance. Oh, and they get their electricity from New Zealand's only 100% carbon zero certified electricity provider. That's us. And if you haven't signed up to Ecotricity yet, mention EV City when you do, and EV City and Ecotricity will plant 10 trees on your behalf to celebrate as part of the Million Meters program. Not to be outdone by the next generation 350 kilowatt DC quick charging spec for CCS, the Tadamo Association has announced a new version of its DC quick charging standard that it says will support charging speeds of up to 400 kilowatts. Designed to allow larger vehicles to charge quickly, as well as passenger cars, of course, Tadamo 2.0 will continue the same vehicle to grid technology as previous standards, something that CCS still hasn't figured out but it will also include something called plug and charge, a system that will allow for automatic billing of customers without the need for RFID tags or credit cards, thanks to identification of the vehicle. In other words, a much more Tesla-like experience. And finally, in most of the world, coal-fired power stations are being phased out in favor of cleaner, greener energy generation methods. But with coal-fired power stations still having everything they need to connect them and large amounts of power to the grid, it turns out that former coal-fired facilities make great sites for massive grid-tied energy storage projects, which is why Daimler and its subsidiary, Mercedes-Benz Energy, along with GETEC Energy and the Mobility House, have just built a grid-tied energy system with a difference in a former coal-fired plant. Rather than house Second Life batteries, the facility is housing 1920 battery modules that are identical to the ones used in the third generation of the Smart for Two EDs. The idea to help keep those modules alive so that when a customer needs a new battery for their car, an active in-use battery from the facility can be swapped out for the old one. Since keeping new batteries in a gently active state where they're used gently is better than storing them in an unused state, Ben's hoped that the site will be the first of many. 
And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know what to do. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.